Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is you're watching this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to this video tutorial. There are already many tutorials for building fast track turnouts available online, including those produced by the tool manufacturers. Yet, since I've been offering these turnouts for sale, I've often been contacted by people asking for advice without ever ordering any turnouts from me. This leads me to believe that there are many people out there who value my knowledge while not feeling completely comfortable with the official documentation. Sometimes it just takes tuition from more than one teacher before something makes sense. I've been hand building track and turnouts for decades without jigs and also recently have constructed over 250 turnouts using the fast tracks tools. So I feel that I am more than qualified to present my version of a fast tracks turnout tutorial. It's a bit too long for one video so I split it into three segments. Be sure to check out the other two parts and also the video that I published earlier showing various random hints. Now if after viewing my tutorials and the official documentation you feel that you are ready to tackle building your own turnouts then that's fantastic. I will be honored to have been the catalyst in introducing you to this fascinating aspect of the hobby. If on the other hand you still feel that hand building turnouts is still beyond your capabilities or if you don't think it's something you're going to enjoy or if you don't want to invest the time or if the turnouts that you need are of many different configurations and the cost of the tools would be prohibitive then I hope you will consider ordering the turnouts you need through my website. Well anyway that's enough introduction let's now head over to the workbench and build some turnouts. Now that we have all the various parts prepared it is time to start assembly. The first parts to be added are the stock rails and what I'm doing now is I'm just putting a little bit of flux paste everywhere that there's going to be a solder joint. It's important to use flux to allow the heat from the soldering iron to clean the joints perfectly. And I just line the stock rail up so the notch I filed earlier is just about sixteenth of an inch beyond the throw bar so I have a little bit of tolerance. Run my fingers all the way along it to make sure that it's properly seated. I give myself a nice long bit of solder sticking out. Now I'm going to pick up just a small amount of solder for each joint. I'm going to start by tacking the, st the straight stock rail in place just one joint at each end and one near the middle so that holds that for now and then I'm going to make the curved stock rail now this needs to be curved before it goes in at the toe of the turnout there needs to be a very slight kink just a barely perceptible kink and then we need to put a curve through the rest of the turnout now fast tracks do make a rail bending tool but I found that it's a lot quicker and easier just to do it by hand. I do have the rail bender but by the time I got it I'd already built enough turnouts that I could get a perfect bend first time nearly every time. So I basically don't use it, it's just sitting in my drawer. So now I'm going to do the same three ties that I did before. So now the turnout is self-supporting. I'm going to come back and fill in all the other ones. And if you hear the sizzle from the flux, you know you've got enough on. I hope you can see fairly well without the reflection from the lamp because I'm struggling to see and this first copper tie after the throw bar you've got to be careful to make sure you spread the stock rails as much as you can otherwise your gauge will be narrow because at this point the grooves in the jig are a lot wider than one piece of rail with the stock rails firmly soldered in place I offer up the V now on the fast tracks videos they delay installing the V. I don't like to do that. With doing it their way it is difficult to solder the first tie 
and that is probably the most important one. I position the V as far forward as it will go, and then I check with the NMRI gauge. I need to make sure that I have a slight rattle on each side, so just a little bit of clearance. If it's tight, then just slide the V back a little bit. But that one is good the way it's intended. And I hold the end while I get the first two joints in. Now these two ties here have to be soldered on the inside because there isn't really enough space between the rails. On the number six and shorter you can get the soldering iron in there but the longer ones it doesn't work too well so I just do it on the inside but that doesn't matter. Now for the first tie on the V I want to get the smallest amount of solder I possibly can because I don't want big fillets in there I want just enough to run under the rail and glue it by capillary action. When I shaped the wing rails earlier, I carved out a little bit at the bottom to miss that fillet. But still, I don't want to make it any bigger than necessary. Once the V is in, the next thing I install are these extra ties at the end. Too much flux there. Now these have to go in with a gauge because the jig is not holding the rails the right distance apart. Now on the plus side these joints are likely to end up the best ones on the turnout because you don't have the great chunk of aluminum acting as a heat sink. And although you don't really need to, I like to take the turnout out of the jig at this point and cut the ends off so that I don't catch my hand on them during later set steps of the process. I'm still leaving them a little bit longer than they need to be. Next it is on to the closure rails. On most of the turnouts there are eight joints to do here. On the number 10 turnouts, so there's an extra tie at this point. Make, make sure it's seated properly, because this is one rail that has a habit of springing out if you let it. <clears throat> and then I tack solder it at the first copper tie next to the knuckle. And then bring in the second stop, the second closure rail, place that the other side, tack solder that. Now I deliberately only solder one joint on each one at this stage. Now I'm going to check with the NMRA gauge, make sure that I have good clearance through here, and also make sure that I have an acceptable fit at the knuckle. We want just the smallest amount of rattle with the NMRA gauge. And once I'm happy with that, I go back and fill in all the other joints. And the wing rail, I hold down with a pointed object such as a, a small file, because sometimes, as I said, it has a, a tendency to spring up. And it's important to make sure it's properly seated. point I get a six wheel truck and I test it to make sure that it works. What I'm doing is I'm just letting the truck free wheel through the frog in the facing direction on both routes. And if it goes through properly at this point without the guardrails then you know you have a good frog. I notice I have a little bit of solder on top of the rail here which is why it's bumping.
perfectly smooth, no tendency to bump on the V at all. Now the next step is to attach the throw bar and you may notice that I already have a scrap of copper tie in the slot. That's because I found that there isn't enough room for the point blades to be moved the right distance from the stock rail. So I need to lift it up so that they are above the jig. Sometimes there will be a tendency for them to hook outwards away from the stock rail. So I have to correct that at this point to make sure that once they touch the stock rail back here, they then sit neatly against it right up until the toe. I'm going to have to turn the light on because I can't see. Well, I've switched over to the other turnout now because I forgot to turn the light off again after I finished checking the end of the, of the switch points and of course it wasn't possible to see, for you to see anything with the reflection. So I'm going to re repeat the last part of the video. I insert a scrap piece of copper head tie between the stock rail and the switch point, put a little bit of flux paste on each side. Now I'm going to hold the point blade in the right place with a pointed tool such as a, such as the needle file and I like to get a good sized fillet of solder in here because there is often a weakness in the web of the rail from the filing process. So by getting a good fillet of solder in there I'm filling in all the weaknesses. That's one done. And then I switch this spacer to the other side. Again, a good size fillet of solder. And you're probably not going to be able to see much now because my hand's probably going to be in the way. But I have to get where I can hold it straight. Now I just make sure it works properly. Now the last part of this step is to install the guardrails. And you can, can generally feel when it's seated properly. Sometimes it's necessary to hold it upright with the thin pliers. But I felt that one go in. And again, I felt that one go into the slot. Can't see it because I've got the light turned off. Get one end soldered. And then with the NMRA gauge, I'm going to check for clearances through the frog in all directions. And this, at this point, I'm not worried if it picks the end of the check rail because I haven't finished that yet. And I'm going to hold the end of it down with a tool while soldering the second joint. Now I'm going to take the burrs off the ends and put a slight chamfer on, just so that the ends of the check rails and wing rails don't rip fingers and catch on track cleaners. And now I'm going to go through and test it with the NMRA standards gauge. You probably can't see it, that on the facing direction I'm pushing the gauge sideways towards the V. So that if it catches, it will tell me that the check rail is in the wrong place. And that one is catching slightly. So I've got this thin file from Fast Tracks, And that will allow me to do any cleaning up necessary. Make sure I get any, any obstructions out of the flangeways. And also fixing any tightness. I didn't feel any tightness on this one, but sometimes I guess. Okay, that's working perfectly that side. And that's now perfect that side. It didn't take much. It was a while before I ordered this file. And ever since it arrived, I've been wondering how I ever managed without it. So even though it seems like an expensive tool for what it is, it's worth getting it. It's like 30 something dollars. But it's well worth every penny of it. And this step is now done. So I'm going to add that to the pile of waiting turnouts. And get on with the next one. Well, that's all for this segment. Be sure to check out the other two segments of this tutorial and also the hints video that I published earlier. 
If you now feel ready to tackle building your own turnouts, that's great. The people at Fast Track will appreciate your business. If not, then I hope you will consider having me build them for you instead. I hope you found this tutorial useful and hope to also see you again in many of my other videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching and bye for now.